I was I was like, wow, their outfits are absolutely gorgeous. Um, what inspired you to dive into your culture and represent it? Well, as you know, you know, and probably a lot of people know it. At first, you know, it takes years to really, <laughs> to really learn the craft. And actually, I don't even think that I've, I've learned it because the more I paint, the more I realize that I have so much more to learn. But, but it took me years and taking mm -hmm. workshops with a lot of wonderful artists um, that I admire. But I always was looking for my voice. Like, uh, I didn't want to be a clone of somebody else. I wanted to find my own voice and a wonderful uh, artist, uh, artist and, and, and teacher. He, um, I was asking him that one day and he said, well, paint what you love and you will find your voice. And uh, one day I was studying a great artist that I admire, that I have studied for many years, which is Joaquin Sorolla y Bastida, you know, mm -hmm. the great Spanish artist. And, uh, and I wanted to I've always been attracted to uh, horses, you know, and and I thought, gosh, I wish I could go to uh, Spain, South of Spain, Andalusia, and and paint some of those, uh, you know, uh, women on the horses, las sevillanas, you know, whatever. And but I couldn't. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute, my grandfather's sport that he loved, uh, which is la charreria, that's my ma my maternal grandfather. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute, there is Alien Socharro, a Mexican uh, rodeo uh, here in San Antonio. And I thought, wait a minute, I'm gonna go look for those. And so I, you know, was very blessed because there's a lot of charros here in San Antonio. So, and there's actually what is considered the oldest uh, Lienzo Charro in, in the United States is here in San Antonio. So um, so I headed out there and I went to the event and I was just, just in heaven. I was just in awe to see these uh, men and women and, you know, these true athletes that uh, ride with such fearlessness and such uh, training and and I, I just loved it. And um and so I started painting the subject matter and I submitted to uh, several galleries uh, that used to represent me, but I think it was, uh, yeah, in Santa Fe or something. And um, seemed like people enjoyed it. I didn't really know what I was actually, people say I did or was doing or whatever, but, um, but uh, as to finding uh, my voice. And then I submitted uh, one, a painting uh, to the uh, American Impressionist Society which then I was very fortunate to have win uh, Best of Show. Um, and uh, that immediately, with that, it immediately pushed me into Western art. And without knowing, uh, I didn't know I was doing this, I was just painting what I loved. And I loved it, you know, and it showed, and I thought, wait a minute. Uh, La charreria is very much part of Western contemporary Western art because a lot of people don't know that uh, Mexican charros have been in the States for many, many years. Actually, I believe the first association uh, was created in 1923 in the States of charros. So it's 100 years at least and much more than that. So I said, wait a minute, you know, I'm painting something that I understand, that I love, that I think I can, I can uh, open a new dialogue in Western art about it. And uh, and then I, I started painting Charreria and then I just fell in love with the girls. You know, I, I always wanted to ride uh, more horses. I did ride some, but not as much as I wanted. And it's funny because I was just thinking yesterday, uh, my mom brought me my baby book <laughs> and my grandmother, um, she had written uh, and that I begged and begged that I wanted a horse and I wanted a horse. And I thought that was funny because see, I was attracted since I was a baby to this. So I started painting the girls and uh, and the girls in the charreria were always a very important part, but they were more in in a back plane. They were not as important as the, ch as, uh, as the charros. And so without even knowing it, I started bringing them to the to a more important part. And that's what they say. And but mostly it opened a dialogue into in contemporary Western art to know 
for people to know this is very much part of Western art. Now, it, it has been hard. It was hard to open, you know, to open that door and, you know, um, but it's been very rewarding and I feel very lucky uh, to have done it and like I am, um, or still do it. Uh, like I said, I, I'm painting things that would open dialogue as to, wait a minute, are these just girls that are riding horses? What are they? Is this in, in it? Well, this is the national sport of Mexico, which uh, a lot of people know. Um, I have mentioned it. My grandfather very much was involved in making it, uh, uh, was very involved uh, in trying to make it the, the national sport of Mexico, which was achieved in 1930. One so there is that connection that my grant with me with uh, with my heritage. So I found that in Western art, not only the artists but the collectors are highly educated. They know exactly when you paint a Native American scene. They know what tribe, what outfit, you know, or if they're painting Western, what hat with what tack or whatever, they know it very well. Well, I didn't know it, uh, and but I knew Mexican charreria and I knew I could understand it. And and my goal has been to represent it with uh, a lot of respect and uh, dignity as, uh, as, uh, as I should, you know? So I, I try and do that and try and educate people, listen, there is a reason for these outfits. There's a reason why they go up out to the neck. There's a reason why you don't put sequins. There's a re because there's rules and regulations. So I am trying to do my little part of keeping this tradition, preserving my heritage alive in Western art. And uh, I guess people say, well, she found a niche. No, I think the niche found me because I painted what I loved. And, and that is what I tell my friends and students, find something that you really love and you will find your voice.